Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to another episode of Pyanodons. Um, if you've been following the channel, thank you for your patience. I've been on a little bit of a trip, so I didn't have a chance to record more videos, but we're back and ready for more Pyanodons action, which means 800 buildings to make one thing. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, I've only done a couple things since the last episode, but I did move my little mini mall over closer to the action on the east side of our base here, so you can see it's no longer kind of just chilling over by our iron mining. And I feel like I've done another thing or two, but I honestly can't remember what they were. If I did do anything important, it was, well, it wasn't important, it was small. Something I do want to do, I think in the last episode we maybe thought we'd push this back farther, but I want to get better lead and titanium out of the way right now, simply because, I don't know, it's just something easy to do, and it feels like a nice simple chain. All we have to do for titanium is this, just a few crushing and sorting buildings. We will have some output gravel and stone. And then all I need to do for lead is literally just, uh, I believe they're screening buildings. Yeah, automated screeners. So that's literally all we have to do. And we might even be able to smelt these in regular furnaces. We'll have to check that out. But it, since it's a Pinedon's recipe, we probably can't do that in regular furnaces. Um, so I think I'm going to continue this pattern of having one ore spaced out by two. It will make the base very large, but that's just the nature. One, two, three, four. And so that way when I get bigger factory buildings, I'll have room to replace these smaller ones. And then I can also expand downwards when I get the more complicated chains. So kind of this section, let's see, right here, you know, this will always be 10. And if I need more room for 10, I'll just expand it down farther. Um, so then I'll make this one lead and then titanium one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So all I can really think about at the moment is just how much, <laughs> how many resources are going to be wasted sitting on these belts. Um, because I'm having an incredibly long bus here just to get all this done. But I think it'll pay off in the long run. This is more organized than I've ever really been before. And I think in the long run, this will pay off to have easy access to changing all of these. So we're gonna need our, our lead ore to be coming in on the top of our tin ore, I think is where I decided it would be. Which means we'll need a space here for splitting, and then we will have the lead come down. And then we actually want... Yeah, this is one of those scenarios where I can do output priority at lead, or... If I can find it... There it is. But it'll be stacked, so it's actually down here somewhere. Lead ore stack of eight, and that will come down here. And we'll do some quick unstacking. We'll do that right there. We'll come in the left side of the building. I normally come in through the top, so maybe I should be consistent there. We'll attach up our power poles and power up the building. Increase its power limit, because who knows how much power we'll need. And all we need is four screeners, which I already have, and ten foundries. And I don't think I can make... Let's see, lead plate. I don't think I can smelt this in the regular buildings, but let's see. Oh, I can. Look at that. So I can just use stone furnaces instead, which I think in this case is worth it. Because these foundries are not worth the space they use. Because 10 of these foundries... I mean, can I even fit them all in here? I don't think I can. Actually, maybe I can. I can fit exactly five. So I could do something like this, and then the fifth one could be like right there. And then my screeners I could fit, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it. Their power usage is also, I think, higher. 
because they use 280 kilowatts and a furnace only uses 90 kilowatts for half the speed. So it's not even like it's a more efficient option though. I mean, we get fuel, we get electricity more efficiently than we get burnable fuel, but it's not more efficient on its face. So that's perfect. Those four fit there. We'll have our ore grabbed from the side, like so. And each one of these can handle 2.5, so I actually need two grabbers. All right. All right, so then we need an inserter here. And we need two inserters. That was probably not the easiest way to do that, but we'll take it. Okay, so 2.5 lead ore in and lead ore out. How did, oh, I hit X. You know, I never use this button. I should rebind X because I literally never use it. Um, I probably want to do this as well. So that I can have an inserter going out on each building. And then we'll have that belt coming down and up. And now I have the question of do I want to use 10 foundries? Maybe I should just not, because that's also 10 times all of those resources, which is a significant amount. So we will just go with 20 furnaces. And that means we'll also need to bring in some fuel. And let's see, the best way to do this is have all 20 in a line, I think. So then we've got fuel and lead coming in like this. And then we're outputting like so. And then actually just visually, I like it when they're grabbing from the same spot better. I think that should do it. Okay, I think that works. And then this will be my lead plate output. That will come out the top. I think that's everything we need. We just gotta bring down some fuel, which we've got coke on a belt. It'll come down here. Okay, and then we want Let's see, I guess we actually need to do this because I want to capture the coke with an underground belt like so. And then I won't even unstack it because there's no reason to because furnaces can use stacked coke as fuel. I believe. We'll just double check. Yep. Okay. So now we just need to get the lead ore flowing, which we'll go do real quick. And then we'll have better lead. And the lead one is really important. I mean, you can see the output differential is triple for the same. And acetylene is very expensive and time consuming to make. So if I can get triple the amount of lead plates from the same amount of lead ore, that's great news. And then we actually have our tin ore right here. 
So I can stack my lead. Right there. Just come over and down. I think that's literally all I need to do. And that will take 18 years to fully saturate. But it'll get there eventually. And then titanium is going to be the same thing. So we actually are just going to use titanium ore here. And I just want to double check where are these titanium plates being used. So they don't get used until here for my rubber. So even though I'll be making titanium over here, I will need to ship some of it to the left and up for the for the rubber. But otherwise, I can just ship the titanium on the same belt I've got the plates on currently, which will do. But first, I'll double check that this lead actually gets processed correctly. Speed up time for a second. It's oh so slow. It'll go even faster. Okay. Alright, coming in. Unstacking. There we go. Jump in our factory. I love factory Simo. Now this can only handle 10 lead ore per second, but that would be 100 acetylene per second, and we're nowhere near that amount, so. I think by the time we need more than this much lead, we will be well into green science and have some other options available to us. But yeah, here we go. And then we've got that, and it should just get gobbled up by these furnaces. Start making some plates. Sweet. And that'll take a while. And then we've got lead on the output belt, which would be which one? I think I actually did the one on the left. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll want to stack that. Put that on the top layer of this one. How do I go about doing that? So I'll make these two go underground. And then we will have stacking go on the top. I think I like that better. And then we'll merge it in. And I will just feed a bunch of plates into these so that they'll distribute them all. I guess I need to keep some. Okay. So that's successful. And now let's go deal with titanium. So we'll run over to where we're mining titanium. And I think I'll just keep this the way it is. Except I'll just put ore on this belt. And then that will come on the top of this belt, which comes alongside the glass. And then eventually we sort to the left. Now we're not stacking until that point, so the most we could get here is 7.25, or I mean 7.5 titanium ore. And now I've uh, really screwed this up. Uh, let's filter glass to the right. Um, take that out. So should I be stacking the ore way up here? 
Honestly, not sure. I, again, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that right now. That's a pretty easy fix later. So then this ore will go in here and get stacked up. And that'll come along the bottom of this path. It also looks like I need another factory building. Connect up the power. And then this will be titanium ore, actually, instead of plates. We'll have that branch off. We'll do the reverse trick for undergrounds. And then we will unstack. Like so. But the problem is we don't want titanium plates. We actually want titanium ore, which should be coming coming along. Okay, so now we need to look at our end recipes. We do want to unstack these though. I think there's an option. I thought I even had it enabled. Kind of weird. If you pick up stacked items, it automatically unstacks them. But I guess if you grab them from an inventory, they stay stacked. I think is maybe how it works. Uh, in any case, we need four screeners. I'm probably going to use all my resources and then some. We need three jawbreakers. Yeah, we need more steel and engines. And then I need two more screeners, a secondary crusher, and three foundries. So, thankfully my mall is a little closer now. Grab some more engines. Grab some more belts. We're looking pretty good on cables, looking good on small parts. Pipes, we're actually doing okay on. We need some more undergrounds means we need yet more belts. Okay, uh, and then steel is down here somewhere. Here we go. Uh-oh. Are we still doing okay in here? Yeah, okay. We're just... It's slow going to get the steel all saturated, I think. Yeah, I took a bunch of iron um, to kind of get that mall refreshed. But yeah, steel is still pretty expensive. We we do need a better recipe for iron than the one we have right now if we really want to mass produce steel. And then I think in green science we also get molten steel, which is a much better recipe for steel itself. Okay, and then I needed to keep this pinned. I don't know why I keep exiting those. I need two more screeners. Secondary crusher. And three foundries. And that should do it. So we'll start out with our four screeners. All in a row. Those make grade 2 and grade 1 titanium. And the way this works is grade 2 gets turned back into grade 1. And then all of the grade 1 gets fed into screeners which produce grade 3. And then some rejects, and the rejects get fed into a secondary crusher, which makes some more grade 3 and some gravel. So there's a few interesting priority splitting type things we need going on here. And I don't know if one inserter can handle that, because it's two different resource types at 0.75 per second. So we will do that. And again, we have an input rate of 0.25. So this time, 
We'll have them grab from here. We'll go over these. I don't know. I guess we'll just see if this works. Because we need two going out. There's two going into that one. Hmm, not quite. So we almost need something like this. And then there's two going in and two going in. Okay. So now I've got two going out from each screener. Also, can we just appreciate the art on these things? It pours this stuff in and then it like sorts out the different sizes. It's, these buildings are just so cool. The art in Pyanodons is absolutely incredible. Maybe the best art of any mod pack in Factorio. I feel like Industrial Revolution has some pretty sweet art, um, but there's nowhere near as many buildings or as many just absolutely stunning animations, I feel like. Industrial Revolution maybe feels a bit more like it fits with Vanilla Factorio, though, in terms of the, like, polish, maybe is the right word, but I don't know if it's quite as impressive as Pyanodon's art. Pyanodon's, in terms of its, like, photorealism, kind of, I just think, takes the cake way over Angels and Bobs, and definitely over... I mean, Space Exploration's pretty sweet, too, though. I can't lie. Okay, what are we doing here? So the question is, does this all fit on one side of a belt? It indeed does. So do I go down or up? I guess we'll just go down. And then we need to sort. And there needs to be three jaw crushers that get used up first when it comes to grade one titanium. So, I think I can make do with two spaces here for three jaw crushers, like that. And what we do is we will put on the left, let's see, what am I doing here? So the jaw crushers are using the grade one, so we'll put grade one on the right side. Leave some space for inserters here. And then we actually will have the grade two on the right side here. This will only let grade two go to the right. And then that grade two I guess we can just do this will merge with the grade two that's coming from here. And we will input priority right. So that way we'll always use the grade two coming from these buildings first. And then we also have stone as an output, which is a problem. So the stone, so I guess I need left to be grade one. So then stone and titanium will come to the right. And then I actually need stone to go to the right. And we'll just try to get that out of the way. And then we need to go on the bottom side. OK, that should work. So now these, I should be able to have one inserter for each in and out. That'll work fine. I think these will put on the right side. I hope. I guess I can switch things around if I have to. Insert and outsert. And then here we need insert and outsert. And yes, I do know that outsert is not a word. Let's just make sure it's putting on the right side. It is. And then... 
Grade one. Wait, oh, I screwed this up. It needs to be the other way. It's grade two that needs to go to the right. I wish I had some more titanium ore being mined. It's so slow that I can't even really tell if I'm doing this process right or not. Okay, so we've got that working correctly. And then this should be inserting. Oh, that means I should be having this one go to the left. Right, so then everything else goes to the right. Okay, so I only messed half of that up, but then I switched the wrong one. <laughs> First, and then stone we'll have coming out the top. And then this should be our grade one that's prioritized correctly, which all of that goes into two screeners. Which I think I can do like this. Maybe. And then. We have the input of 1.5, which a single inserter can handle, and an output of 0.75 over two items, which we will have to split and have a secondary crusher. Oh no, are we not going to be able to fit all this? Oh boy. Hmm. Okay. I think I can move these to the left a little bit. And then we'll have this come down and over. This one will be the one going in. These two will go out. These two will go out. OK. And then we need the secondary crusher to be available. I think this is going to work. So these will come out, go down. Split left will be titanium rejects. And that'll go in. And then we have out. Get combined. On the correct side of the belt, but we need to actually prioritize input party left. Uh, is that... Then it will be the wrong side of the belt. You need to be placing on the close side. Oh, I do have the offset option. Okay. For some reason, I thought I didn't have this option yet where I could pick what part of the uh, belt I'm placing on. But I do. So, oh, you know what? This happened last time. Um, there's a setting that makes it so that when you click on an inserter, it brings up that little window, which we need to find. I'd imagine it's in map, but I guess we'll find out. Maybe it's per player, Bob's adjustable inserters, inserter window, dock position. I think I like. I have no idea. Let's we'll start with top. OK, yeah, so it does that. Maybe I want right instead of top. We're learning together. OK. It used to just always be there. 
but now it's a extra setting. Okay, so we want to make sure we're putting on the bottom side of the belt here, so we click there, and then it will make sure to do that correctly. And then we will also have some gravel, which we will need to deal with. So we'll come out here, and we'll sort out the gravel to the left. Problem is I'm blocking all but one output here. So I actually will need gravel to be on the same side as these titanium plates. And we'll have to sort it outside. But at this point, I'm very committed to making this work. And one inserter is 0.833, so one inserter in and one inserter out should be good enough. So we'll have these two out onto a belt doing this. And then the input will have to come here. And this one can input. This one can output. And this guy can input. So I can just do something like this. All right, that should do it. And the gravel will meet up with the plates. Obviously, with this, we'll have a maximum output of seven and a half plates per second. But clearly, <laughs> our maximum output is much more constrained than the half of a belt. So I'm not too worried about that. So we've got stone coming out the top left and gravel coming out the bottom right. So we'll need a filter gravel and stone. We'll have this come up. I'll have the gravel go left. Gravel. That will join with the stone. And we'll have to ship that back to the left for our gravel, stone, sand processing business. For now, we'll put it in a chest, which I do think will last a very long time. I mean, are we even still mining titanium? I think the lead is taking all of the acetylene, yeah. So, we do need to produce a lot more acetylene because this lead is going to take all of it for a while. There's a few pieces of titanium here and there. I might actually, just to balance things out, delete two of those miners for lead so we can't use all of it. Because I'm really curious if all of this runs properly now, but we don't have enough input to find out. So let's just assume we've done this in a way that has worked. We'll put all this stuff to the side. That guy was a little too slow. But it, I mean, it does look like it's working, so that's good. The ore is just very slow to come in. And then this is our titanium, which we will need to compress, put on the bottom of a belt, according to the right. And then we will underground. And just have that come right on up. And again, this one actually needs to be one that outputs priority so that we don't have any of the ore come to the left. Yeah, you can see when I pick up the stacked ones, it automatically unstacks it. But I think that should do it. It's just going to be extremely slow because I don't have very much acetylene. And eventually the lead will back up, but I don't know if we're anywhere close to that either. So might be might be a long time let's go let's go remove some of those lead miners 
But look at that, better titanium and better lead, all figured out. Okay, so how much acetylene am I making? Twelve and a half. Let's change this. We'll see if I can fit this all in one building. Okay, we need some water. Make that up. And then that guy exactly matches, so we need another one. Maybe down here. Making specifically for that acetylene maker. Not enough ingredients. What am I missing? Can't find anything in this game. <laughs> it's been a while. Stone bricks. Okay, let's grab some more stone bricks. We're actually close to that. Yet another thing that we haven't bust yet that we probably should have on the bus. Okay, so then the problem is we need coke and lime. Lime... This outputs... More... Let's see. It outputs the same rate as limestone. We need 0.5 lime. Which means we need 0.5 limestone, which means we need another soil extractor. But I can handle that problem is the coke, which we don't have enough of. And this only produces one coal per second, which is not quite one coke per second. This is using one and a half times, point, is that point three seven five plus 0.875, which is 1.2 coke per second. So this crusher is not even running this guy full time, I think is what I've just had a revelation about. So really, I need another secondary crusher first and foremost. All right, we're going to make some changes here. This is laid out horribly. Past Crydax, well, I'm not happy with him right now. We'll make this a little better. Okay, so we're still going to want that doing output there. We'll move this up one. Do I have filter inserters? I do. They're expensive, but I have them, so I'm going to use them. And we are going to 1.5. We're going to do one of these. And now the filter inserters will put coal dust and crushed coal. I can find it. So many things here. When you copy the filter settings, you also end up copying the orientation from Bob's inserters, which can be a bit annoying. And now we need filters for the regular coal, which is in the original. These move 2.3 per second, so that should be plenty. And now we need that to turn into coke. And we need two of these limestone bad boys. We'll have the water attached to the top. And this needs the lime and the coke. And you mix it all up, right? That's how the song goes. We'll actually have that kind of sitting. 
And then we can have the inserter attached diagonally. Save us some space there. Now we're making calcium carbide mm -hmm. in these. Okay, and then the lime. I think we can just have one building doing that. Put that here. Yeah. We'll have the coke running through maybe like this. So they can all grab from the coke belt. And this can grab from both limestone machines. And then we need coke on this belt and we'll still just vent this carbon dioxide. And I think that should be a lot better. This is producing up to two coal per second, so we need to make two coke per second. I think if I move these over, I can place them right here. Forgot about dealing with the coke oven gas. Uh, 1.25, 1.25. That doesn't save me any space. Run this down here. That one we can just connect up directly. Okay. So that's not bad. Oh, we need to actually put the coke on a belt. Right. About that. Hmm. Hum de hum de hum. Okay. How can I do this? Like that. I think that will actually solve my problems, because then I can output both of these, like so. Actually, we'll just make this even simpler. We'll just do that, put my gas vent here, call it a day, and then we will need to use a corner inserter for the limestone. And our water got detached. And there we go. So I know this maybe didn't seem like part of the plan, but not having enough acetylene was a pretty big part of not having enough lead and titanium. So I'll probably need to copy this design more than once even to get enough acetylene. Oh, right. And then we also need to have inserters for the lime to make calcium carbide. And then those each directly insert into these guys which make acetylene and slaked lime. And slaked lime we're currently just storing up. And it looks like we're actually about to be full on this. So I need another tailings pond. Or I might make some of the smaller smaller guys. We'll store some in Hmm. I like these four KL tanks. I feel like they're a good size. I mean, they're smaller, I think, than the vanilla ones, which only hold 25k, so... I like that. We'll put a couple here and attach that up. And there we go. We've got a little bit more acetylene per second, I think. Except I've done something wrong. We're out of water. Aha. I see the problem. Never brought the water down. That should do it. And I still don't think I have quite enough coke here to actually run both of them full time, but it'll be a lot better now. 
And I will take away two of these miners, so... I'll leave it being those two. So that I can use at most 20... Oh, wait a second. That's that's right. These only use uh, half of that per second. So these are each using five per second. So I think we'll have a maximum of 15 per second to mine lead. And then the rest will go to titanium or more. I'm not really sure how, you know, the liquid splits because some of it will end up going up somehow, even though it seems like it should all be going down. Yeah, there we go, getting some titanium ore. And eventually it'll all back up as things do in Pyanodon, because you spend so many hours doing other things that even if you just are completely not producing enough, it usually ends up backing up eventually anyway. So, there we go. Okay, sweet. Well, we've got that running at not full tilt, but some amount of tilt. And in the next episode, we will continue working towards our green science prerequisites. I think the first thing we're actually looking to make is the... Uh, I think we'll need these... Um, is it laboratory instruments? Because we're wanting to make the cDNA. Because we need cDNA to make some of the plants. And so we already have most of the things we need here. We've got bio sample, moss gene samples easy. Just glassware and moss, we can just make that by hand. Petri dishes, substrates, got all that. We now have rubber. Optical sets, we'll just need to make some boron trioxide. So let's put that on our list. Optical set. Because that will be pretty easy to make. Um, I mean, we can even make these by hand, it looks like. If I'm, yeah, handcraft. So. We'll just handcraft the laboratory instruments that we need. I mean, I don't think we need a lot of cDNA. No. And then plasmids. We'll need that Zogna bacteria. Zogna bacteria. And if I'm not mistaken, that's actually a liquid. So it may or may not be worth it to put that in pipes. Um, and we'll need to make that in incubators, which looks like we have everything we need for. So we can work on that. And then finally, we'll need the retrovirus, which needs Vrauk cocoons. Which unfortunately means we're going to need to actually get Vrauks going. So, Vrauk cocoons. I think that's how you spell that. So those three things are all stepping stones in order to make cDNA, which is a stepping stone in order to get Moondrop, which in itself is a stepping stone to making, well, Moondrop seeds, which is what you make. I can't find it, but that's what we need for our circuits, formaldehyde, or maybe it's urea. Is that what it needs? No, yeah, it's the methane. Sorry, not formaldehyde. But methane makes formaldehyde, so I was halfway right. So we'll need Moondrop for that. And I would like to automate circuits. Again, I'd, I don't really know if I should be automating Science 2 first or Circuits 1 first. They're both pretty difficult. A lot of them have interlinking steps anyway, so I'm fine with either. Anyway, I think I'll call it an episode for now, but thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you guys next time.